Okay, uh, Pippa Funnel has very kindly agreed to have a chat with me today. Um, Pippa's eventing career has obviously been amazing, winning badminton and becoming European champion twice, plus winning numerous Olympic medals and also the first rider to win the Rolex Grand Slam. Um, Pippa, thank you so much for chatting today. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. Well, it's a little bit late in the day. Oh, um, my day during during the day is absolutely full on. Um, but no, thank you for asking me to have a chat. No, not at all. Thank you, because I know you're very, very busy, particularly at this time of year. Um, so Pippa, having sadly lost badminton for second year running, and now the likes of other major internationals, um have gone as well what's the season season looking like for you um do you have a nice team of horses um i mean yes it's incredibly frustrating because over the last however many years i've been building up a, what i think is a very exciting string again um obviously one of them being mgh grafton street who it seems bizarre one one burley is an 11 year old and i thought gosh you know a young horse at that level to be to be winning at that level and how exciting and it's unbelievable to be thinking that if badminton hopefully will run next year he's not going to be 14 until he does his first badminton which is unbelievable to think that actually, even though we say we just missed two years, it's actually three by the time it comes round again. Yeah. Um, so gutted about Babington. I think we all are absolutely gutted. And along with him, I have, yeah, I have three other really nice horses at that top level and a couple just below. So even though my string isn't particularly large, I've just got sort of seven, eight eventing, six of which are sort of right up the top end of the sport and, and all, I think, horses with a lot of ability. So very frustrating, yeah. very frustrating. Um, and uh, Pippa, is Tokyo in your sights? If it goes ahead, obviously, I mean. Um, I, um, I mean, I'm, definitely um preparing and planning to hopefully go to a championship yes whether it be tokyo i think more realistically hopefully the european championships as i said i've got three horses that to me are well capable of going to a championships i think um re tokyo probably i'm just outside uh the the four i mean obviously the horses um it's all every run we have is important because they're not having a main selection like at badminton or at a top sort of five star event so they're selecting on current form at, at more at the four star short which obviously is different from 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 usual from normal um i think that in this country we've got a really exciting squad i think there's some really really good combinations i would put my neck on the line and name sort of tom McEwen on toledo de Cus, which is is a yeah. very very good combination piggy french with her young horse um oliver town yeah. with his gray horse ballymore class yeah and obviously laura Collett yeah. is on pop form at the moment so i think you know, I think it'd be hard to break into those four, but, you know, they're horses and they're not machines. Anything no. can happen. So we have to, in my head, work away and prepare. Yeah. Prepare. Very exciting. Um, and Pip, what, was, what would you say is your most uh, memorable moment in your career? I mean, I know there have been lots, but what is um, something that stands out? Means I have actually, you. I've got, I have, I mean, I've been so incredibly lucky within the sport, I really have. And, and, um, you know, when I was younger and I jumped to doing this and that, you know, I've certainly fulfilled the, the dreams and goals that I had. Um, I would say I've got sort of three standout moments really in my career. One being when I first um, when I first won the individual 
uh, European Championships, the gold medal at the European Championships on Supreme Rock in 1999. Yeah. That to me was a very, very special moment because I felt finally after you know all the work and yeah. I suffered from nerves and everything, I felt as though finally I could do it on the world stage. Um, and then after that, for sure, it was Sydney getting to an Olympic Games is the most unbelievable experience. Um, yeah. It's it's more special than anything, to be honest, to be yeah. part, you know, represent your country at the Olympic Games. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and to win a medal, you know, a team medal there, it was in Sydney, so it was a long way to go. So it yeah. was, it was, yeah. Worth it was trip. unbelievable. <laughs> yes, it was worth, yeah. well worth the trip. Yeah. And then, of course, the grand, you know, the final leg of the the Rolex Grand Slam, um, which was all seems a bit of a long time ago now, and an, all in a big haze. But it was, it was um, probably, yeah, my greatest personal achievement. Yeah, what a feat that was! Because M- Michael Young was the only other person to have achieved that, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and for sure, you need. You, you know, I was incredibly lucky like he was and that, you know, we had, it, I mean, two, I had two very, very good horses in Primrose Pride and Supreme Rock. Likewise, you know, he, he had um, the horsepower too. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but you still need, do I say a lot of luck or do you make your own luck? I don't know, but, but um, you need things to go your way. Yeah, and in, in my case, it, 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 it went my my way. It was very very close. Um, actually, every event was close. The margins between winning and coming second was very very small indeed. And I was just lucky that yeah. I just had the edge at each event. Yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. And uh, and after winning, I don't know, maybe the Grand Slam, the final leg of that. Did you ever feel like you know that winter there was a sort of did, did you ever feel it difficult to stay motivated once you've reached that pinnacle? Yes. <laughs> it was once actually probably... It all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was pro- probably one of the toughest times, actually, mm. um, mentally for me, because, yeah, exactly that. I mean, it was such an incredible year that year, the the, the year I won the, the Rolex. Um, because on top of that, I we won team gold at the European Championships and I took the young horse there um, um, and he was third individually yeah. and I also won Samur and Blenheim. So I had a yes. unbelievable year. And it yeah. was exactly what you said in the winter. I really struggled because I thought, I mentally I thought whatever I do from now on I'm never it's never going to yeah I'm probably never going to have the year like I've just had Mm -hmm. and and so it did did make me question and it made it quite not little well it did make it a little bit difficult to sort of get my head around it but then the more I thought about it the more I actually realized that the reason why I do it is because I just love the day to day grind. You know, I love yeah, working yeah. with the horses, and, and it's not just working with the horses, they're part of me. You know, yeah, you just exactly. love them as individuals, and, yeah. and actually, the, the it's results. A way of life is, and everything. Yeah, it's a way of life. Yeah. And, and what, what happens at a competition if you get good results is just part of it and 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 a bonus but i i would on i could honestly sit here and say i don't now do it just for the for the results i do it for the everyday still yeah yeah and the, and the buzz i get from from producing and 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 getting you know i just love the challenge of trying to get into the horses minds and getting the yes. best out of them i can yeah um and and um people what what phase i mean you're brilliant at all three phases but what phase do you find or have you found the hardest to crack or whether it's been nerves or i don't know get your head around i don't know well if i'm if i go on last weekend at burnham market where i had five horses and three doing different dressage tests i'd say the hardest phase was the dressage because oh. i lost, lost my way on three occasions oh no um, oh god so, <laughs> so maybe that's an age thing and the memory thing um 
I mean, for sure, uh, you know, it varies a little bit on the horses, doesn't it? I yeah, mean, for instance, exactly. a horse like Mare's Hope, he finds the, dr the dressage the most difficult, I find yeah. the dressage the most difficult phase with him, whereas, you know, others, but probably my, from a personal point of view, yeah, a lot of it is, is, is um, dealing with the nerves for the cross country, mm -hmm. but I sort of now, I think, have got a system for overcoming that. Yes. Um, and I sort of know however bad the nerves and however horrible I feel, I sort of am used to the fact that as soon as I, the countdown, as soon yeah. as it gets, you know, down from five, I know once I'm leaving once the... I'm doing it, it's start, fine. Mm -hmm. The start, I'm... I'm absolutely focused yeah. and, and so those horrible thoughts have gone. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> but it's still every, every, I mean, every phase is, is difficult and I, and, and for sure, the older I get, the more I have to work harder to keep myself sort of, you know, on top form. Yeah, yeah. And we all have to learn our dressage tests, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And um, Kit, what would you say is the best piece of advice you could give a young person, you know, an up and coming rider um, whose heart is set on a, an eventing career? Is there anything you wish you'd known or learnt when you were? I mean, I think, you know, I was incredibly lucky because I had, you know, I had a lot of um, help from different people. Um, I would, I mean, obviously I'm involved with this um, Windrush Young Rider Academy and I sort of train and mentor those young riders, a sort of group of four or five um, sort of under 25 riders. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing I would really say is that, or not warn them, but not warn them at all, but they've absolutely, if they, if they, um want to do this sport they have to be absolutely 150 percent dedicated they've yeah. got they've got to work hard they've got yeah. to work hard and they to me absolutely paramount that they absolutely see right by their horses that yeah. they don't let what they want to do come in front of what the horses are ready to do yes. um yeah. so yeah. i think sometimes that's that you know when you're young you can get hungry and yeah you know you and impatient yeah and i think it's important that that um it's trying to develop the horsemanship yeah. skills and learn more than anything learn from mistakes that are made or you learn from experiences and and that's what i often say to them if you know people are down they've had a bad day mm. you have to try and get them to put things into perspective and yes. and realize actually in the larger because it's, it's it's a tough sport it's a tough sport emotionally it's a tough yeah. tough sport on you mentally and physically um yeah. we get very emotionally yeah. involved with the horses and, and obviously it's a dangerous sport and yeah. and i think um i think it's important for the young riders to realize that it's it, it is a tough sport yeah. um, mentally and that yeah. but and that's one thing that i'm doing the academy is to make them realize actually you know it's important to talk and and mm -hmm. chat and get advice it's important to watch top riders it's important yeah. to ride at watch riders at all levels so you can learn from that and yeah, yeah. sorry it's a bit more than a one word answer that's isn't it no, but really the, the biggest the, very the, the biggest thing definitely is that to me you know unless they're prepared to put the work in then yeah. they're going to struggle yes no absolutely um and um Pip, apart from riding every day although actually you're probably riding from dawn till dusk do you are there any other forms of physical or mental activity you sort of do that i don't know alongside that help that help you yeah i mean well more i mean yes i mean i do a lot of sort of pilates and yeah. and stretching um i if i'm honest i've been a bit naughty recently i was i was actually running a lot in the winter but running isn't great for my knees but i did actually thought i must do more mm -hmm. and then i got a bit despondent when badminton was cancelled i oh, sort of yeah. stopped stopped the running and actually more recently i've been very busy riding and that i almost think if i run as well it's nearly going to be too much be too um i i do do a you know some circuit training um yeah. 
sort of stretch various stretching and squat mm. and these you know mm. up downs and all sorts yeah. of things yeah. so I do do quite a lot to work and I think it's it's one thing that I know S stretching helps me enormously um at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day and and obviously anything that works on my core strength um yeah. Yeah. so I I do do a lot now to you know work on my balance and yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and and um, did you ever have retirement plans? Or uh, no, they, no, no. Um, but I, I, if you win at Burley, if there were any, surely you're. I for it's sure nice I've things uh, further to keep going, hasn't it? Um, I mean, for sure, I've had times in my career when I thought why you know it's a tough sport why do I keep putting myself through some of the you know and, and most most of the times if I've thought along the lines of retirement it's because, been because I'm of my age and been because I've had falls and I've been in pain you know and yeah. and, and, and I yeah. think the one thing nearly that's made me um, and I kept on nearly beating myself up, thinking I'm too old to then, too old to then. You know, why do I keep doing it? And I, do, as I said earlier, I do it for the love of the love of yeah. every day, the challenge of or the producing these horses to get them up to a level. And yeah. and you get, as I said, so attached to the horses. And if I retired tomorrow, then the, a lot of those horses would leave my yard. So, yeah. and yeah, in the end, certainly cannot do that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just think definitely with with the lockdown and everything, it made me actually keener, you know, it made yeah. me think, yeah, I still do want to do it. And, you know, all the time I feel fit and able to do it and I do enjoy it still, then I'm going to keep going. And the day I, I've got no pressure on myself no, and I've no. well, worn the owners, right. you know, yeah. the day, yeah. Um, and um, have you got, is there anything in particular on your bucket list of things that you want to achieve in your uh, career? I mean, anything else? <laughs> I don't know whether it be. I mean, you know, of course, anyone can say, well, I wish, you know, anyone that's ridden at a top level would love to say, I wish I won the world championships. I wish I, wish I won an Olympic individual team gold medal at the yes. Olympics. But, but. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I've got any things on my bucket list, but I still actually, if I, if I have a goal to go to a big event, yeah, I, I, there's no, to me, there's no point in going to that big event unless I feel competitive. Yeah. You know, it doesn't interest me in going to a championships to finish 35th. No. No. You know, if, if I can't put in the performance to help a team win a gold medal or, yeah. or get an individual medal i'm not interested in going so yeah so i'm still competitive yeah but if i if i don't get another result then i'm ha i'm still happy with what's happy with what you all the amazing things i've achieved <laughs> yeah so um, um and um so everything's obviously this lot that last season things had to change uh because of covid with the way events were run um do, do you think it's probably taught people in some ways better methods of organizing the the these events um, um some good to have come out of it maybe we're trying to look for any good i mean i personally the one thing i do like is the fact that it doesn't sit yeah you know i love the fact that they're not hundreds of people waiting in a collecting ring that I really yeah. like for the show jumping and cross country because mm -hmm. to me it got ridiculous in the end with the show jumping when you had you know oh, they yeah. give you times but end, people end up putting their numbers down and then you yeah. get there for your time and you, yeah, you find that 30 people have put their number down yeah. so that has always driven me potty because I've yeah. always been one to try and absolutely stick to my times mm -hmm. so I think that's been a good thing um I think they'll leave it like that. I, I don't know. It just, you know, they just got to be, I think they've got to be straight that they mm. keep people to the times. You know, it's always difficult because you have multiples, you know, you have yeah. people with a lot of horses. I mean, I 
try to only ride three in a day on the whole um you know i i don't want to it doesn't interest me in riding four or five okay i rode four in a day at burnham market show jumping cross country but they'd done the dressage the day yeah. before yeah i choose not to do it you know i i i i love doing i'm quite happy to do three but four to me i feel as though by the time I'm on the full course, I can't do as good a job. No, um, no, exactly. And yeah, so, but I think, you know, what's come out of COVID, I mean, you know, I think you still miss, don't you, everyone? Oh, come for a drink of my lorry, you know, we oh, haven't no, got no. to that stage yet, so. No, um, well, hopefully soon. Hopefully. But it's still great to see, see everyone. It's great to be out and competing again. Yeah no i'm sure um and if uh, tokyo does go ahead which hopefully it will do you think as a result of the lack of runs lack of international competitions and general match practice is going to sort of have an influence on the sort of i don't know the shake-up of of everything i suppose everyone's in the same position yeah i think everyone's in the same boat i think i think um I think the standard of dresser, you know, it, it's been interesting. I think a lot of the standard of dressage and things has gone up. I think people yeah. th throughout lockdown and things, they've really been working away. Mm -hmm. I personally don't think it will affect the horses too much. I think horses, when they get to the top level of the sport, they can miss a year and then, and okay, they might need a few runs because they're a bit fresh and things, but yes. they don't forget. I think it's it's mainly the you know people being shut up enough yeah um, yeah but i still think it will be the you know it'll be the same old lot that probably yeah. come through and mickey yeah. young will be up there probably winning yeah. medals and yeah, um, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but the other thing obviously is is it's gonna that you know it's gonna be hot out there yeah so you know again the humidity is very high isn't it out there yeah very very high um so but you know we'll see it'd be interesting yeah no it will, it will um and sort of moving on to your business and everything has the pandemic um affected your business r really badly um no i mean we we were very worried it was going to very worried yeah. um at the, this time last year mm -hmm. um fortunately um we'd done three three online auctions before this pandemic ever hit yeah. so we were always planning to do another online auction and 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 last year we ended up having four actually and then we got another one coming and actually actually they went very well and, and yeah. we i think you know the the fortunate thing is that we don't have a yard full of old horses you know all of ours are young horses and i think people were still interested in investing in young horses to produce yeah. Yeah. during the lockdown period so um you know last year i would say we had you know we weren't affected and no, finger, no. fingers crossed it would be the same this yeah. year and i think the fortunate thing was is it wasn't a new thing for us to do an online auction no. so we'd we'd already done three years and and people you know the billy stud is now a brand and i think people recognize the name people yeah. know the fact that william and i have a huge amount of experience in producing young horses yeah and and we can also use past horses that have gone on that have mm -hmm. been sold in previous sales so i think i think you know people you know trust the name trust the yeah. brand and i think yeah. and we're very very transparent and 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 yeah. um you know there's certainly some nice horses that have come out of the sales the yeah. the sales and like this there's some nice horses that are in the the next online auction Where so the next one it's in may right. um it's over it's over houghton okay what day is that that's something like the twin uh, yeah 20 yeah somewhere. yeah 24th or 20th yeah. something like that yeah um 27th yeah um and and brexit was that i mean was that as much of a worry or any worry well i think that's 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 more of a worry more of a worry mm. yes because i mean um 
for sure it's affecting uh, um us re-competing abroad yeah. um william i mean that's a a huge ex a much larger expense i mean it i didn't go down to the sunshine tour in the spring but william they took 16 horses down and that was much more expensive to travel horses there so the whole travel and all the paperwork it's 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 a nightmare the yeah. the everything that needs doing to take courses abroad yes. and yes um we've been quite quiet since january as in set horse sales um and a lot of our customers are from abroad i mean we, we still sell quite a lot to america now yeah. so obviously that won't be affected by brexit but but i think um It'll be interesting, but I think Brexit will affect our sales. Yeah. And but hopefully, if it affects the the Europeans coming over, mm -hmm. um, hopefully maybe the British people will, you know, they they must struggle to go to Europe to to yeah. see um, and buy horses in Europe. So yeah. you know, maybe more people buy British people here. might buy. Yeah. 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 Um, but the one the one thing with the Billy Stud is obviously, you know, people know that that the horses, you know, we've we've bred them, we've produced them, they've not been, you know, shipped from pillar to post and tested, no. you know, so, so that's proper secure upbringing. <laughs> so yeah, well hopefully, yeah, no, I mean they have, you know. Yeah. Definitely. So um yeah. and um just moving on to your wonderful books you've written. Do you think you're going to write any more in the future? Is that something you enjoy, really enjoyed doing? Yeah, no, I did enjoy it. really enjoyed it. Um, right at this minute, I can't see myself having the time. Um, um, but I would certainly not say never, but, no. but who, who knows? At the moment, I've got nothing in the pipeline, nothing no. planned. But, but I did, I really enjoyed doing them. Um, I need to possibly sort out trying to get some more printed it's the publishers have sort of swapped hands and things and the people all all the people I dealt with before um have since left um but they they um you know I I love the stories um and and the feedback I've had from yeah. people that kids have had the books of I mean it's awful to think now because a lot of a lot of sort of early you know people in their 20s now say oh we had you know we yeah. have your pilly books and i'm thinking oh my god you know oh. it's that long ago now but um no it was good they were good fun i really enjoyed them oh, that's brilliant um and finally if you could go anywhere in the world on holiday for a holiday what where would you like to go what would you be your ideal holiday would it be just collapsing on a beach um, or ooh, I don't know I mean I okay. listen I like a good holiday you know <laughs> I do like I do like holiday and actually we've been really lucky and actually probably one of the most fav the favorite holidays I've had and I've had we've been lucky to have two of them and it's a really real luxury but we've been very lucky to go with Nick Skelton and Laura Kraut on Gary and Beverly w Widdersons boat oh, wow. um, we went once up the Amalfi coast and another around the Greek islands and um and they so they the Widdersons are owned as a big star so that and actually the, that is just magical yeah. because you just you don't have to dress up you know you're on a beautiful boat beautiful weather amazing food yeah fun it's people days. love it days, yeah if if I can't do that, then I'm very happy being at home with my animals, my dogs, yeah. and yes. Yes. my dogs, my horses. Yeah. Oh, Pippa, thank you. It's really, not at really, all. Not really at all. interesting, and um, I'm sure all the members will love hearing from you. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> thank you so so much. Not at all. Not at all.